My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. The feast of the dedication was taking place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus walked about in the temple area on the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning I was thinking about a time when I was around 12 or 13 and I understood the truth that my parents were wrong about everything. And so I came to this great enlightenment and I was at someone's house visiting and their kids were acting up and the parents had to say something and it was an embarrassing moment because there's their priest you know and the mother's trying to talk to the kid and she has this glazed look over her eyes and I could tell she was hearing nothing and I thought that was me at some point it's probably never happened to any of you here this is a picture of what Jesus is talking about. I told you, and you don't believe. By contrast, a number of times I've um, met with the children to help them understand Eucharistic adoration. And during that time, I ask them to listen to Jesus to see if he's going to talk to them. And it's amazing what the kids hear. One of the things that really startled me was I asked, I asked the kids, I said, did you, did you hear Jesus talk to you? And one of them raised his hand and he said this. He did talk to me. He told me that my parents' divorce wasn't my fault. Wow. When did we forget to hear? I told you, but you did not want to believe. And so, because as we somehow never grow out of our teenage rebellion or our pre-teenage rebellion and adolescent foolishness, God has to give us certain road signs so that we can hear and believe if we choose to. The Ten Commandments, the sacred scriptures, the teachings of the church. And even if 
you want to look across denominations, at the very least, the scriptures and the commandments give us everything we need to have a harmonious life. Not only interiorly, but also socially, when a communion of people gather and cooperate because they're all listening to the same shepherd. We can be very, very critical about everything that's going on around us. On the other hand, the more we personally become more responsible and more attuned to hearing the voice of the shepherd by some of the obvious signs he has given us, the more we contribute to building a society and a culture that is directed by reason and faith, beauty and goodness. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me. The more we di divorce ourselves from the one who created us, the more we move away from him, the more we choose to have glazed eyes and not listen to him, the more anarchy and disharmony seeps into our culture, into our personal lives and our homes. Again, a lot of stuff we can, we can point the finger all over the place. Point to Washington all you want, okay? But the real onus comes on us living a gospel life every day, no matter what everybody else is doing. And so we become that salt of the earth and the light of the world that Jesus told us. And none of this is ever done without effort. Actually, when, where there's greater effort, there's better results. One of the places you see this is in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the time of persecution, they did not back down. They took advantage of the dispersing of the community to use it to spread the gospel. The Holy Spirit led people to spread the gospel. You see here where Paul got his big endorsement to begin his ministry to the Gentiles because Barnabas gets him on his cell phone and says, I need you over here. I think you can do this. Last place, Bar last place St. Paul probably thought he would end up. And the community flourished by even suffering and pain and lots of hard work. No productive endeavor comes to fruition without some kind of dying and rising, with some kind of cross and suffering. Even the most organic image you can t think about that Jesus reveals in the Gospel of John. Unless the grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. The grain of wheat has to die, and it has to pierce through the rocky soil so that it may sprout. Endure times of drought, and endure times of winter, and perdure for rich fruit. And so, for us, that grain of wheat that falls to the earth and dies is our dying to my way every day and rising to new life in Jesus Christ and living by his word, especially as it comes to us through the scriptures, through the church teaching, sometimes even in the voice behind the screen of the confessional. And most profoundly, when we take time to pray especially in adoration. The appearance of bread can speak volumes in a very loud voice for those dear children who are willing to hear. Pray.